Hi, George here, and I'll be showing you how to use Photoshop Elements to remove the background around here, like we have right up in here, and give you something more along lines like that. We can actually change the background to something else. Okay, fairly straightforward. I'm just going to remove some stuff in here. I'll leave that layer. Let's delete this layer, and I'll delete that layer. There we go. And we're back to just the basic layer. Now, there are Several different approaches on this. If you have a newer version of Photoshop Elements, and you can go up here to select and then use the subject select. That does a pretty good job. There you go. Not too bad, but it's not perfect. I'm just gonna use Control D to deselect that one. If you're using an older version of Photoshop Elements or you wanna have more control over this, then I recommend using the Lasso tool right here. Set this at new, set feathering at zero, and then simply come in here and make a lasso fairly close to the subject, but not necessarily touching. If you happen to go over it a little bit, that's fine. It's not that critical, but just come around and then do a nice little lasso around everything that you want to keep in the image, leaving out everything that you don't want to keep. Now we'll be using the refined edge to clean this up so you get a much better selection. But this is a real easy way to come in here and just get out what you really don't want to have. Okay, just going clear around here and on the bottom down here. There's a problem on this one and that is her back area over here. Very hard to see this. I'm just gonna freehand this and do it about where I think that should be. And I think that looks pretty good. Luckily, because it's a shirt like that, it's not gonna be a big issue. And then same thing up around the top. There we go, go clear around again. Don't go into the hair, but just outside. And clear around over here and then back to the beginning again, cross over the beginning, and there's your selection. Now, if you're concerned about losing that selection, you can save it. Go up here to select, come down to save selection. Give it a name. I'm just going to call this one girl like that and choose OK. Just in case things get messed up, I have that as a safety. Now, normally I'll make a copy of the background in here, just like this. Right click where it says background and duplicate layer. Choose OK and then hide that original one. Let's now come down here to refine edge. A couple of things about this, the brush size is over here, bottom left-hand corner right now, it's at 35. I don't know why the size isn't over here inside of the dialog box. It really should be in here someplace, but it's over here, 35. Okay, and this size is pretty good. I like having the size just a little bit larger than the space that I've covered in there. If it's a bit too large, you can make it a little bit smaller. If it's too small, you know, just go up a little bit. About, as you can see here, just about a little bit more than that actual space we see in there. If it gets too far away, you can always come in and paint in with a couple of strokes like that and work your way in. Now the technique on here, right hand side, this is on the brush setting up here. I like using the overlay, which is this red background. It's usually very easy to see against anything else, but you have other options. You have the regular selection marching ants or on black or white, black and white on layers or a veal layer. Again, I almost always use the overlay for this. Although I may use on black and on white just to check it once I've finished. Now down here, edge detection, smart radius. This is going to soften the edge down just a little bit. And sometimes that helps on things like here. So I'll set this at one, just a little bit of softening on that. On adjust edge, I'll come down and put just a little bit of contrast in here. Sometimes that helps clean things up just a bit, 15%, that's fine. I won't do any shift edge feathering or smoothing. It just softens things out too much. Okay. There we go. And then simply come in here and then brush right over the edge, just like that. If you want to zoom in on this, the zoom control is up here inside the Refine Edge dialog box. Zoom in like that so you can see that a bit better. And it's right over that edge and then work your way around. Let's do the girl first, then we'll come back and we'll finish off that rose as a second pass. It's a little dark right in here. We can clean that up if we need to. I think we'll be okay though. Their masks can be cleaned up after you've made them. Hold the spacebar down to move your image just like that. And let's get the shirt over here. A little, little bit messy right in here. We'll see how that looks. Depending upon what you use as a new background, that may or may not be a problem. Now, one thing I recommend is as much as possible, have your background similar, your new background similar to the old background. So in this case, it was a black background. I don't want that, but a dark background is a good way to go. Now, the reason for that is a bit of haloing that's gonna always show up on this, and I'll show you what that is. 
when we get to that point. So let's just finish going around and make sure we get the whole thing selected in here. Now, you will lose some real thin hairs. There's no way to stop that. You won't get every single hair. So what you want is to get as much of that as possible, the effect as possible. And that's where the smart radius comes in. The higher this number is, the more those small hairs you're going to get, but it's going to be more of an outline around those from the background. Basically, it softens it down and gives you a bit more background around that. So this is a real trade-off, and I find that one pixel works out pretty good. For most small hairs, you will lose some. Can't be helped. But again, if it's not really noticeable, then it doesn't matter. Okay, let's work our way around in here. Notice I'm doing this in little short strokes. That seems to work out best. If there's some spots inside like this, just come back in from the outside a couple of times and they should catch those little inside spots. And we'll finish up here. And come in there and there, just working into the hair. There we are. Looking good so far. So it's a pretty easy technique. As you can see, nothing really difficult about this. It just takes a, a few moments, maybe a minute to come in and do this. And the reason I like doing this with little short strokes is it seems to do a better job this way, get a better quality. And I think it's just because the computer has to think about what to do in here. And the less it has to think about, the better the effect is going to be. You're not stressing your CPU at all when you're doing it in just little short strokes. All right, let's finish up right down over here. And once you finish this, we'll go down to the exact same thing for the rows. That'll be faster. It's not as critical. And again, if there's some little stuff like this, I like to work into the area that needs to be fixed. Now, what's happening here is as you brush over this, Photoshop Elements goes back in and re-examines it. Sometimes you see that whole thing pop up like that. Don't worry about that. It's just rethinking. Okay, spacebar, and let's come down. Let's get the rows. This will go real fast, not as critical. But even so, I will take this in shorter strokes. I won't try to do the whole thing at once. And I'll just work my way around. There we go. A little longer strokes this time because it's a real sharp, clean edge. And it takes less figuring for Photoshop Elements to actually grab that. And around this side, finish that off right here. A little bit right there. And last side, we're almost finished with this. And then we'll change the background. We'll take a look at this. Now, I'll be putting this on black and white and showing you some of the problems that can arise in here and the solutions for those. Okay, here we go. And last little bit right in here. And then right into there. A little bit of that row is showing right there. And don't worry about that if the whole thing shows for a second. It's just reconfiguring. Okay, there we go. A little bit right in here, a little soft right there. We'll take a look and see if that's actually a problem or not. Now, if the red part comes into your image like it does right down here, you can clean that out again. Go over here. This is the basically the eraser tool. It erases what you've done. And I like using this by just tapping into it. And I'll try to bring in that shirt again right in there. Okay, that looks good. Let's now zoom this back out to fit screen. And come down where it says Output 2 and change this to New Layer with a Layer Mask. And it gives you this as a protection layer. Now, you can see up here if I zoom in on this along the top, because we had that Smart Radius set at 1, it gave us a little bit more of the background showing in here, but that also allowed us to keep some of those thinner hairs. And this is why it's good to, as much as possible, make the background similar to what you're coming from. So I had a dark background, so a dark background is the way to go. If I wanted to make this any harder, I could do that, but as I go harder on this, I'll begin to lose some of those small hairs. I'll come back to that in just a second. Let's first come down here, and let's check the shirt area right down there. So there's a little bit of a fuzziness in here. You can clean that up on the layer mask itself. Also, the chin is a bit off right here. Layer mask is black and white. White shows and black hides. So because of that, we can paint onto the layer mask. If I grab my paintbrush here, I have white. White is going to show. And you want this, usually at a hard brush for this. And if I come in here and paint white onto the layer mask, it then shows that area again. And I can clean it up that way. I think the same thing for the chin right down here, just a little bit right in there. 
We lost just a touch of the chin. There we go. And then switch this over to black. Click on the little icon here, swaps those colors out. I'm still painting on the layer mask. I can now paint in here and hide a lot of that. And if you want to, you can just freehand this. That usually works out pretty well. It requires a steady hand, of course. Now, if it's just like this, just a bit fuzzy, but not really a problem, we can fix that in a second. I'm just going to first get this last little bit up here, make my brush size smaller. Click that, and that should do it. Okay, down here, I'll go over here to this tool. It's in behind the Dodge tool. It's the Burn tool. It's my brush setting. And if you're burning the colors here on the layer mask, it makes them more contrasty. And that usually will clean up edges like that really easy. Just kind of brush over that and it cleans up that edges. And that's the exact same technique we can use at the top. I'll first catch this over here. We'll come back and get that in just a second. I'll just go back over here to the top. And by doing this, you may be able to get rid of a little bit of that shadowing or that outlining happening. But as I do this, it'll also be losing some of the real fine hair effect up there. So don't do that much of this if you really want to keep all of those thin hairs. It works better just to go to another dark background. Okay, a little bit of spot right here. I want to fix that. Spec our paintbrush. I want on white. And then let's just paint that back in right here. Just like that. Switch to black. Clean up that edge. There we go. And we'll go back to fit on screen. And there it is. We've now removed that background. Now let's see how this looks on different colored backgrounds. I'm going to put a new layer in here. New layer. Let's fill this with white. And you can see there on a light background, I'm seeing some problems down here. And I'm seeing that dark outline around there. That's because the background is the exact opposite of what I had originally. Now if I change this to a black background, same thing. Let's just fill that with black. You don't see any of that. So going for a darker background is the way to go on this. Let's just hide that. And now we'll come down here to graphics. And I have my set for backgrounds. A lot of things in here. If I go for a light background like this, same problem. I can see that edge showing up in there. But if I go for a darker background like the one down here, it looks real nice because it's a dark background. I don't see that little bit of dark haloing around there. So there you go. That's how you can. Remove the background around here. It's just a matter of being careful with your refine edge tool and then going for a background that's going to hide any little bit of haloing that you may have on that edge. So dark background, go for a dark background. If it's a light background, go for a light background. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. I have a link for that right down there in the description. Make sure you click on subscribe. That really helps out my channel. And I'll see you next time.